This is the best moments of the Barbecue Central Show in 10 minutes or less. Ever wish you could re-listen to your favorite interview or segment? Do you enjoy hearing older shows for the first time in years? Then the best moments of the Barbecue Central Show in 10 minutes or less is just what you need. Thanks for listening and enjoy the show. Welcome everyone to another edition of the best moments of the Barbecue Central Show in 10 minutes or less. Today's show is being brought to you by Crawford's Barbecue Products, makers of all natural, gluten free pit spritz. Head over to CrawfordsBBQ.com. Check out everything they got going on there. Today's show is actually a second best moment show from July 17th, 2012. It's a double header featuring the one, the only, Meathead from AmazingRibs.com. Oh, you know, when this song's on, things are going to start taking off and seismic and gargantuan proportions. I uh, just looked up on Billboard's Top 20. You Can't Hurry Ribs has a bullet right by it shooting up top to number one, only behind Kelly Clarkson and some kook named Rihanna. So, uh, look for that. My next guest, he is a crowd favorite, runs the most trafficked website related to barbecue and grilling on the face of the earth. He appears once a month on this show to talk about some of the hot topics relating to the industry that we both love so much, which is barbecue and grilling. Let's race over to the hotline, why don't we? And uh, grab Czar of AmazingRibs.com. <laughs> Look at this giddy up, everybody. It's uh, Meathead. Meathead, what's up, buddy? That is my Meathead. Uh, it, oh, yeah. I'm telling you, it is the, uh, of the likes I have never seen before. And, uh, I mean, it's a hot dog, right? It is a hot dog. Of course it's a hot dog. Look at that thing. Wow. With, with mustard, not ketchup. Oh, that's mustard, all right. You got a mustard-colored shirt, and you got the mustard hat. Look at that guy, yeah, Bob. That guy's a, crazy. Meathead. I'm a meathead. Well, I, there's, uh, w- while some may have had question recently, we can uh, definitely put that myth to bed. We've debunked that myth. You are a meathead of seismic and gargantuan there proportions. Is. Truth. You know me. I am always looking for the proof. Uh, meathead, before we get into some of the items that we're talking about tonight, how does one get the most heavily trafficked barbecue and grilling website? I have no idea. You don't? I am the luckiest man on the face of the earth. I started a little website in 06 about barbecue, and it's taken off. I, I mean, you know, it's some. a lot of it, it's, if you build it, they will come. I think there's good content there. It, I keep putting a lot of effort into it. Um, it's just a lot of fun for me, and people seem to appreciate it. Um, Google likes it, and I think that's a big part of it. Google sends, a, sends me a lot of traffic. I think if you Google the word ribs, it's the first one up. I think if you Google smoked turkey, it's the first one up. If you Google barbecue brisket, it's so that helps a lot. Yeah, but I mean, it's enough that if I can make a living at it, I'm making a decent living. Uh, uh, you know, I gave up my day job and uh, I do um, barbecue all day long, all night long. I just I, I'm, I'm the American dream, man. It's just amazing. Absolutely. Who wouldn't like to do that? Meathead. All right, hold on a second. Veer off for just a minute. Sure. I just got done reading Adam uh, Perry Lang's new book, Charred and Scruffed. And there's some, some really interesting new techniques, concepts, stuff that was new to me in there. And one of the techniques that he uh, shows, and I've tried it, and I've done it like four times now, and it's wonderful. He calls it a board dressing. He'll go out and grill a steak or a chicken, um, and um, while it's grilling, he'll put some chopped herbs, handful of chopped herbs, maybe some garlic, maybe a little bell pepper or something, um, really finely minced on a cutting board, and pour, you know, uh, six tablespoons of oil on there. Mix it up so that the oil pulls some of the flavor out. And then he'll bring the meat off, and don't worry about resting it to get the juices in. Just start hacking it up into slices. Like, I mean, it's perfect for flank steak. Just start slicing it up. Let the juices run into this oil and herbs. And then he just rolls them all around, toss them. Very informal. I mean, he's a real macho cook. And the, it's just surprisingly, the herb flavor is not too strong. The oil flavor is bare. But it just puts a layer of unctuousness to it that's really nice. I just try it. Fresh herbs, chop them up. 
throw some garlic, whatever you want in there. I wrote an article about it on my website. I just published it today um, called Board Dressings, and it's just really cool. It really brings uh, life to steak, lamb, um, chicken, fun stuff. Nobody has any idea what unctuous means, by the way. I mean, we're barbecuers for crying out loud. How dare you use big words on us? All right. Let's talk about a couple mythologies. And uh, you have either probably debunked these or, or whatever the case is. But, you know, one of the things I have noticed, and I blame Stephen Reichel, is uh, ass can chicken. This guy would have his $3,800 barbecue you out in, uh, what the hell was that, uh, in White Sulphur Springs. Um, yeah. The name of that place. Now he's out in, like, Colorado or Arizona doing the same thing under a different name. You spent all this money to learn how to stick a beer can up a chicken's ass, and now you're grill master number one. However, you have looked into this even further, which I think, you know, ass can chicken is highly overrated. But there's something else even more far-reaching that you actually took underneath your wings and, and did some study on. What can you tell us? Well, well, let, let's let's start by saying that roast chicken is one of the great wonders of the world. Oh, I mean, fabulous. I just absolutely love a perfectly cooked roast chicken. You have it overcooked, and it's so tender, juicy, crispy, crackly skin. Oh, yes. Beer can chicken is a form of roast chicken. Um, it does one thing right. It gets it upright so that the skin browns all over. Yeah. If you put a chicken into a roasting pan, the heat does not penetrate down to the bottom, and you often get pale, soggy bottom. Turkey is the same way. So by vertical roasting, it does one thing right. But it does a lot of things wrong, technically. And in order, I, you know, I suspected for a long time that this was a problem. And I went to my partner, Dr. Greg Blonder. People who listen in know that I have a, um, a partnership with a physicist who does research uh, for me. And um, we talked about it, and he did some tests. But when you, before you get down to the, we get down to the science, let's just think about it for a second. If you stick a beer can up the blood of a chicken, all the heat is entering the chicken from the outside. Right. Now, remember, cooking is the process of hot air warming the outer layer of the meat. But it's the outer layer of the meat that warms the inner layer all the way down to the center. It's like a bucket brigade. The heat is passed on from the outside down inside. The hot air does its job to the outside. If you stick a beer can up the butt of the chicken, there's no hot air entering the center. So you're roasting only from the outside. Also, when you cook meat, the outer layers are almost always hotter than the inner layers because meat is mostly water, 75% water on the average, yeah. and water is a fine insulator. So you have, let's say, an ideal temp of 165, which is great for turkey breasts. Um, when the center of the breast is 165, the outer layers are going to be 175 or so, a little overcooked. Yeah. If you put a beer can up there, you've got to get that heat all the way down to the rib cage, down to the cavity. If you don't have the beer can up there, the heat can enter from the inside, and so you're not going to get as much overcooking on the exterior. Right. The other thing that Dr. Blonder did, duh, is he took the top off a beer can, drank some of the beer, as the recipes in Steve Raikland's book recommend. That's his excuse anyhow. Um, and then he stuck it up the chicken's butt and put it on the grill. And when the chicken was done, he took it out and weighed the can. And it weighed exactly the same as it did going in. Yeah, you know why? Because it's why? not boiling and evaporating. No, of course not, because the chicken is going to 165. Of course. Chicken is a fine insulator, so that beer can is really well insulated. Yeah. So it, the beer never, in fact, the beer went right along with the chicken meat up to 165. And, of course, as you know, water boils at, one set, at 212. 212, right. Alcohol boils at 170. Uh, there, there is some evaporation, but we're talking about very little. Now, if there's evaporation, where's it going to go? Can is all the way up the butt. It's blocking the walls of the cavity. There's just a little gap at the top in the cavity. So if there's any ev evaporation, it could only enter 
the meat through the walls of the cavity to the very top. Yeah. There's no way it's getting all the way down by the, the drumsticks and uh, the thighs. Uh, the other thing is the flavor. I contacted uh, a beer analysis lab, a guy named Scott Brucelin, that laboratory manager of um, a place called Analysis Lab, and we talked about just how much flavor is in a, a can of a 12 ounce can of beer. And it's under one teaspoon of molecules that actually create flavor. And they're heavy. They don't come out as easily. Um, so there's just no way moisture is coming out. There's no way flavor is coming out. Or at, there's no way it's entering the meat. And what it's doing is it's blocking the heat from getting to the inside. Um, and so my point being, it's a fine way to cook chicken. But I can name five or six ways better. To put in your request for a future show, please contact John Solberg via email at john, J-O-N, at the BBQ Central Show.com. Hey, before we get into the second segment, let me take a minute to tell you about Crawford's Barbecue Pit Spritz. Pit Spritz is all natural and gluten-free. Pit Spritz keeps your meat super moist during the cooking process. The peach pit spritz adds an amazing sweet peach taste to your barbecue. It's great on all meats, and it does exceptionally well with pork. All you need to do is screw the included trigger sprayer onto the 16-ounce bottle, and you are ready to go. Crawford's pit spritz also works great as a wrapping liquid, helping you to bring your barbecue home. Get all the details on Crawford's pit spritz over at crawfordsbbq.com. Be sure you use the coupon code GREG at checkout for 10% off your entire order. That's GREG, G-R-E-G. Moving on. Uh, so we both agree that, you know. <laughs> Patio daddy is the best. Yeah, right? He so, said Budweiser ink is made in China. <laughs> yeah, and there's lead in that ink for sure if it's coming from China. So <laughs> yeah, it's the best. It, it doesn't hurt to use pigtail turners, forks, and thermometers. The, the meat is not a balloon, will not drain oh, dry. This is yeah. like one of the biggest things let's, ever let's, is they tell you not to pierce the skin right, of a meat. Hey, right. don't pierce the meat. Don't use a stick in and thermometer. All right, let's do the math. Let's say you have a 12-ounce steak. That's oh. a nice steak, huh? Yeah. It's 75% water. That means it's 8, 9 ounces of water. How's my math here? 9 ounces of water. Um, if you stick a thermometer in it or use a fork to turn it or a pigtail to turn it, how much liquid actually comes out? A few drops? You know, maybe a, a shot glass, an ounce? I mean, if there's nine ounces of water in here, that steak can stand to lose a half an ounce of water without drying out. So it's not the end of the world. It's not a balloon. You're not going to poke a hole in it, and it's not going to come all gushing out, and you're going to ruin your meal. I mean, it, it, yeah, if you really want to preserve all your fluids, then sure, use tongs. I use tongs. But if you've got to poke it with a thermometer or turn it with a fork, it's not the end of the world. And I would obviously suggest if you're cooking anything other than steak, which you could probably get away from a feel if you've cooked it enough and it's the same size steak and you know what you're doing, you know, chicken, I'm going to poke every time no matter how good I think I am. I want to make sure that I'm safe and I'm at that, you know, 165. You bet. Absolutely. You bet. And, and as you know, there is a huge difference between 165 and 175 on a chicken breast. Um, and if you take that chicken and you cut it into quarters, and you start it on the indirect side, you put some wood over on the hot side, and you get some smoke flavor circulating, and you get that chicken brown on all sides. And then when it hits about 155 or so, you move it over to the hot side, skin side down, and you crisp that skin and brown it even some more. And you pull it at 160 to 165 and let it come up to 165 or 170 at the most. You're going to have one fine piece of chicken. Absolutely. And if you take it much higher, you're not. And that's why a thermometer is the single most important tool a barbecue cook can have. Agreed. A good thermometer, a digital thermometer. Yeah. Buy a thermopen for crying out loud. Spend the eighty bucks, get Thermopens the best on the market, and then you know you're just done with it. You cry once. Well, you buy the best, you only cry once. All right. The last it'll, thing. It'll save you seventy, eighty bucks in embarrassment and bad food. Yeah, and lawsuits in too. A year. Of course. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah all right. You don't want anybody getting sick. So last thing here, we got about uh, two and a half minutes, is the... Let's save it. Here. Are you sure? 
Yeah, let's save it for another night. Uh, there's, there's more time. That, that's a big topic. We'll do it another night. I want them to jump back to talk about the, the grill bristle story. Yes, go ahead. Um, I, I asked people, I posted the story to Facebook and Twitter and a couple other places, and um, I asked people um, how they clean their grills. Yeah. And I got a lot of really interesting new tools that I'm going to study. I'm going to get some samples of them and play with. Um, but the one you cited, the one that looks like um, uh, steel wool, but it's yeah. stainless steel wool, is is a really good alternative. Um, but um, uh, it turns out that this was more than one guy. I had several people come on to my Facebook page and others say they had to have surgery because of a uh, bristle that got stuck in their throat. Um, and it seems like it gets stuck. And, and I, a lot of other reports, anecdotal infinite incidents. So I don't know if the CDC and the Journal of Morbidity uh, have tracked this. But, um, yeah, bristles falling out of cheap grills, um, getting on to food and being ingested. Like on a hamburger, you're not going to always see it on a hamburger because of the bun. Um, uh, but, but are these it, people cleaning their grill while they're actually having food on the grill? I don't, I don't think so. I think what you know most people do is when the grill is hot, they run that bristle brush over it, and a bristle might fall off and stick to the side, um, stick to the top, and they don't notice it. They put the food on it. It gets stuck to the food. I don't know precisely how it happens. People are lazy. People are lazy, and they're not looking. That's the bottom well, line. I, I think if you're going to use a bristle brush, it makes sense to, after you scrub it down, either v- visually inspect to make sure, or, or just run a, uh, t- a, a paper towel full of oil over the surface, and you should be okay. Keep it hot, keep it clean, keep it lubricated, just like Stephen Reichland says. Absolutely. He, he did get that part right. That's if you right. got the beer can chicken on, you got that part right. Meathead Goldwyn appears here monthly. You can visit his highly trafficked website, the most highly trafficked website, AmazingRibs.com. Uh, next month, for sure, it will be the myth of looking ain't cooking. So we'll have a lot of time to do that, plus other stuff that we, uh, yeah, we dream up. Because there's Dr. Blonder's got some good research on that. All right. Greg, it's always fun talking to the uh, Cleveland Cavalier of Barbecue. And uh, I look forward to my monthly visits. It is my pleasure, Meathead. Thanks for doing it. There he is. Meathead. AmazingRibs.com is the website. Uh, so check it out. Everybody else does. Everybody else does. Huge website. And that was Meathead from AmazingRibs.com with Greg Rempe from July 17th, 2012. Don't forget, get 10% off your entire order of Crawford's barbecue products over at CrawfordsBBQ.com. Use the coupon code GREG, G-R-E-G, at checkout. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time, I'm your host, John Solberg. I look forward to talking to you again soon.